Then Solomon said, The Lord has said that he would dwell in thick darkness, but I have built you an exalted house, a place for you to dwell in forever. Then the king turned around and blessed all the assembly of Israel, while all the assembly of Israel stood. And he said, Blessed be the Lord, the God of Israel, who with his hand has fulfilled what he promised with his mouth to David my father, saying, Since the day that I brought my people out of the land of Egypt, I chose no city out of all the tribes of Israel in which to build a house, that my name might be there, and I chose no man as prince over my people Israel. But I have chosen Jerusalem, that my name may be there, and I have chosen David to be over my people Israel. Now it was in the heart of David my father to build a house for the name of the Lord the God of Israel. But the Lord said to David my father, Whereas it was in your heart to build a house for my name, you did well that it was in your heart. Nevertheless, it is not you who shall build the house, but your son who shall be born to you shall build the house for my name. Now the Lord has fulfilled his promise that he made. For I have risen in the place of David my father, and sit on the throne of Israel, as the Lord promised, and I have built the house for the name of the Lord the God of Israel. And there I have set the ark, in which is the covenant of the Lord that he made with the people of Israel. Then Solomon stood before the altar of the Lord in the presence of all the assembly of Israel, and spread out his hands. Solomon had made a bronze platform five cubits long, five cubits wide, and three cubits high, and had set it in the court, and he stood on it. Then he knelt on his knees in the presence of all the assembly of Israel, and spread out his hands toward heaven, and said, O Lord God of Israel, there is no God like you in heaven or on earth, keeping covenant and showing steadfast love to your servants, who walk before you with all their heart, who have kept with your servant David my father what you declared to him. You spoke with your mouth, and with your hand have fulfilled it this day. Now therefore, O Lord God of Israel, keep for your servant David my father what you have promised him, saying, you shall not lack a man to sit before me on the throne of Israel, if only your sons pay close attention to their way, to walk in my law as you have walked before me. Now therefore, O Lord, God of Israel, let your word be confirmed which you have spoken to your servant David. But will God indeed dwell with man on the earth? Behold, heaven and the highest heaven cannot contain you, how much less this house that I have built." Yet have regard to the prayer of your servant and to his plea, O Lord my God, listening to the cry and to the prayer that your servant prays before you, that your eyes may be open day and night toward this house, the place where you have promised to set your name, that you may listen to the prayer that your servant offers toward this place, and listen to the pleas of your servant and of your people Israel when they pray toward this place, and listen from heaven your dwelling place, and when you hear, forgive." If a man sins against his neighbor, and is made to take an oath, and comes and swears his oath before your altar in this house, then hear from heaven, and act, and judge your servants, repaying the guilty by bringing his conduct on his own head, and vindicating the righteous by rewarding him according to his righteousness. If your people Israel are defeated before the enemy because they have sinned against you, and they turn again and acknowledge your name, and pray, and plead with you in this house, then hear from heaven, and forgive the sin of your people Israel, and bring them again to the land that you gave to them and to their fathers. When heaven is shut up, and there is no rain because they have sinned against you, if they pray toward this place, and acknowledge your name, and turn from their sin when you afflict them, then hear in heaven, and forgive the sin of your servants, your people Israel, when you teach them the good way in which they should walk, and grant rain upon your land which you have given to your people as an inheritance. If there is famine in the land, if there is pestilence, or blight, or mildew, or locust, or caterpillar, if their enemies besiege them in the land at their gates, whatever plague, whatever sickness there is, whatever prayer, whatever plea is made by any man, or by all your people Israel, each knowing his own affliction and his own sorrow in stretching out his hands toward this house, then hear from heaven your dwelling place, and forgive, and render to each whose heart you know, according to all his ways. For you, you only, know the hearts of the children of mankind, that they may fear you and walk in your ways all the days that they live in the land that you gave to our fathers. 
Likewise, when a foreigner, who is not of your people Israel, comes from a far country for the sake of your great name and your mighty hand and your outstretched arm, when he comes and prays toward this house, hear from heaven your dwelling place, and do according to all for which the foreigner calls to you, in order that all the peoples of the earth may know your name and fear you, as do your people Israel, and that they may know that this house that I have built is called by your name. If your people go out to battle against their enemies, by whatever way you shall send them, and they pray to you toward this city that you have chosen, and the house that I have built for your name, then hear from heaven their prayer and their plea, and maintain their cause. If they sin against you, for there is no one who does not sin, and you are angry with them and give them to an enemy, so that they are carried away captive to a land far or near, yet if they turn their heart in the land to which they have been carried captive, and repent and plead with you in the land of their captivity, saying, We have sinned and have acted perversely and wickedly, if they repent with all their mind and with all their heart in the land of their captivity to which they were carried captive, and pray toward their land which you gave to their fathers, the city that you have chosen and the house that I have built for your name, then hear from heaven your dwelling place their prayer and their pleas, and maintain their cause and forgive your people who have sinned against you. Now, O oh my God, let your eyes be open and your ears attentive to the prayer of this place. And now arise, O Lord God, and go to your resting place, you and the ark of your might. Let your priests, O Lord God, be clothed with salvation, and let your saints rejoice in your goodness. O Lord God, do not turn away the face of your anointed one. Remember your steadfast love for David, your servant. Then Solomon said, The Lord has said that he would reside in thick darkness. I have built you an exalted house, a place for you to reside in forever. Then the king turned around and blessed all the assembly of Israel, while all the assembly of Israel stood. And he said, Blessed be the Lord, the God of Israel, who with his hand has fulfilled what he promised with his mouth to my father David, saying, Since the day that I brought my people out of the land of Egypt, I have not chosen a city from any of the tribes of Israel in which to build a house, so that my name might be there, and I chose no one as ruler over my people Israel. But I have chosen Jerusalem in order that my name may be there, and I have chosen David to be over my people Israel. My father David had it in mind to build a house for the name of the Lord, the God of Israel. But the Lord said to my father David, You did well to consider building a house for my name. Nevertheless, you shall not build the house, but your son who shall be born to you shall build the house for my name. Now the Lord has fulfilled his promise that he made, for I have succeeded my father David, and sit on the throne of Israel, as the Lord promised, and have built the house for the name of the Lord, the God of Israel. There I have set the ark, in which is the covenant of the Lord that he made with the people of Israel. Then Solomon stood before the altar of the Lord in the presence of the whole assembly of Israel, and spread out his hands. Solomon had made a bronze platform five cubits long, five cubits wide, and three cubits high, and had set it in the court, and he stood on it. Then he knelt on his knees in the presence of the whole assembly of Israel, and spread out his hands toward heaven. He said, O Lord, God of Israel, there is no God like you, in heaven or on earth, keeping covenant in steadfast love with your servants who walk before you with all their heart, you who have kept for your servant, my father David, what you promised to him. Indeed, you promised with your mouth, and this day have fulfilled with your hand. Therefore, O Lord God of Israel, keep for your servant, my father David, that which you promised him, saying, There shall never fail you a successor before me to sit on the throne of Israel, if only your children keep to their way, to walk in my law as you have walked before me. Therefore, O Lord God of Israel, let your word be confirmed which you promised to your servant David. But will God indeed reside with mortals on earth? Even heaven and the highest heaven cannot contain you, how much less this house that I have built. Regard your servant's prayer and his plea, O Lord my God, heeding the cry and the prayer that your servant prays to you. May your eyes be open day and night toward this house, the place where you promised to set your name, and may you heed the prayer that your servant prays toward this place, 
and hear the plea of your servant and of your people Israel when they pray toward this place. May you hear from heaven your dwelling place, hear and forgive. If someone sins against another and is required to take an oath, and comes and swears before your altar in this house, may you hear from heaven and act and judge your servants, repaying the guilty by bringing their conduct on their own head, and vindicating those who are in the right by rewarding them in accordance with their righteousness. When your people Israel, having sinned against you, are defeated before an enemy, but turn to you again, confess your name, pray and plead with you in this house, may you hear from heaven and forgive the sin of your people Israel, and bring them again to the land that you gave to them and to their ancestors. When heaven is shut up and there is no rain because they have sinned against you, and then they pray toward this place, confess your name and turn from their sin because you punish them, May you hear in heaven, forgive the sin of your servants, your people Israel, when you teach them the good way in which they should walk, and send down rain upon your land which you have given to your people as an inheritance. If there is famine in the land, if there is plague, blight, mildew, locust, or caterpillar, if their enemies besiege them in any of the settlements of the lands, whatever suffering, whatever sickness there is, whatever prayer, whatever plea from any individual or from all your people Israel, all knowing their own suffering and their own sorrows, so that they stretch out their hands toward this house, may you hear from heaven your dwelling place, forgive, and render to all whose heart you know, according to all their ways, for only you know the human heart. Thus may they fear you and walk in your ways all the days that they live in the land that you gave to our ancestors. Likewise, when foreigners, who are not of your people Israel, Come from a distant land because of your great name and your mighty hand and your outstretched arm. When they come and pray toward this house, may you hear from heaven your dwelling place and do whatever the foreigners ask of you, in order that all the peoples of the earth may know your name and fear you, as do your people Israel, and that they may know that your name has been invoked on this house that I have built. If your people go out to battle against their enemies, by whatever way you shall send them, and they pray to you toward this city that you have chosen, and the house that I have built for your name, then hear from heaven their prayer and their plea, and maintain their cause. If they sin against you, for there is no one who does not sin, and you are angry with them and give them to an enemy, so that they are carried away captive to a land far or near, then if they come to their senses in the land to which they have been taken captive, and repent and plead with you in the land of their captivity, saying, we have sinned and have done wrong, we have acted wickedly. If they repent with all their heart and soul in the land of their captivity, to which they were taken captive, and pray toward their land, which you gave to their ancestors, the city that you have chosen and the house that I have built for your name, then hear from heaven your dwelling place their prayer and their pleas, maintain their cause, and forgive your people who have sinned against you. Now, O oh my God, let your eyes be open and your ears attentive to prayer from this place. Now rise up, O Lord God, and go to your resting place, you and the ark of your might. Let your priests, O Lord God, be clothed with salvation, and let your faithful rejoice in your goodness. O Lord God, do not reject your anointed one. Remember your steadfast love for your servant David. Then Solomon said, The Lord has said that he would dwell in a dark cloud. I have built a magnificent temple for you, a place for you to dwell forever. While the whole assembly of Israel was standing there, the king turned around and blessed them. Then he said, Praise be to the Lord, the God of Israel, who with his hands has fulfilled what he promised with his mouth to my father David. For he said, Since the day I brought my people out of Egypt, I have not chosen a city in any tribe of Israel to have a temple built so that my name might be there, nor have I chosen anyone to be ruler over my people Israel. But now I have chosen Jerusalem for my name to be there, and I have chosen David to rule my people Israel. My father David had it in his heart to build a temple for the name of the Lord, the God of Israel. But the Lord said to my father David, You did well to have it in your heart to build a temple for my name. Nevertheless, you are not the one to build the temple, but your son, your own flesh and blood, he is the one who will build the temple for my name. The Lord has kept the promise he made. I have succeeded David my father, and now I sit on the throne of Israel, just as the Lord promised, and I have built the temple for the name of the Lord, the God of Israel. 
There I have placed the ark, in which is the covenant of the Lord that he made with the people of Israel. Then Solomon stood before the altar of the Lord in front of the whole assembly of Israel, and spread out his hands. Now he had made a bronze platform, five cubits long, five cubits wide, and three cubits high, and had placed it in the center of the outer court. He stood on the platform, and then knelt down before the whole assembly of Israel, and spread out his hands toward heaven. He said, Lord, the God of Israel, there is no God like you in heaven or on earth, you who keep your covenant of love with your servants who continue wholeheartedly in your way. You have kept your promise to your servant David my father. With your mouth you have promised, and with your hand you have fulfilled it, as it is today. Now, Lord, the God of Israel, keep for your servant David my father the promises you made to him when you said, You shall never fail to have a successor to sit before me on the throne of Israel, if only your descendants are careful in all they do, to walk before me according to my law, as you have done. And now, Lord, the God of Israel, let your word that you promised your servant David come true. But will God really dwell on earth with humans? The heavens, even the highest heavens, cannot contain you. How much less this temple I have built! Yet, Lord my God, give attention to your servant's prayer and his plea for mercy. Hear the cry and the prayer that your servant is praying in your presence. May your eyes be open toward this temple day and night, this place of which you said you would put your name there. May you hear the prayer your servant prays toward this place. Hear the supplications of your servant and of your people Israel when they pray toward this place. Hear from heaven your dwelling place, and when you hear, forgive. When any one wrongs their neighbor and is required to take an oath, and they come and swear the oath before your altar in this temple, then hear from heaven and act. Judge between your servants, condemning the guilty, and bringing down on their heads what they have done, and vindicating the innocent by treating them in accordance with their innocence. When your people Israel have been defeated by an enemy, because they have sinned against you, and when they turn back and give praise to your name, praying and making supplication before you in this temple, then hear from heaven and forgive the sin of your people Israel, and bring them back to the land you gave to them and their ancestors. When the heavens are shut up, and there is no rain because your people have sinned against you, and when they pray toward this place and give praise to your name and turn from their sin because you have afflicted them, then hear from heaven and forgive the sin of your servants, your people Israel. Teach them the right way to live, and send rain on the land you gave your people for an inheritance. When famine or plague comes to the land, or blight or mildew, locusts or grasshoppers, or when enemies besiege them in any of their cities, whatever disaster or disease may come, and when a prayer or plea is made by any one among your people Israel, being aware of their afflictions and pains, and spreading out their hands toward this temple, then hear from heaven your dwelling place, forgive and deal with every one according to all they do, since you know their hearts, for you alone know the human heart, so that they will fear you and walk in obedience to you all the time they live in the land you gave our ancestors. As for the foreigner who does not belong to your people Israel, but has come from a distant land because of your great name and your mighty hand and your outstretched arm, when they come and pray toward this temple, then hear from heaven your dwelling place. Do whatever the foreigner asks of you, so that all the peoples of the earth may know your name and fear you, as do your own people Israel, and may know that this house I have built bears your name. When your people go to war against their enemies, wherever you send them, and when they pray to you toward this city you have chosen and the temple I have built for your name, then hear from heaven their prayer and their plea, and uphold their cause. When they sin against you, for there is no one who does not sin, and you become angry with them and give them over to the enemy, who takes them captive to a land far away or near, and if they have a change of heart in the land where they are held captive, and repent and plead with you in the land of their captivity, and say, We have sinned, we have done wrong and acted wickedly, and if they turn back to you with all their heart and soul in the land of their captivity where they were taken, and pray toward the land you gave their ancestors, toward the city you have chosen, and toward the temple I have built for your name, then from heaven, your dwelling place, hear their prayer and their pleas, and uphold their cause, and forgive your people who have sinned against you. Now, my God, may your eyes be open and your ears attentive to the prayers offered in this place. Now arise, Lord God, and come to your resting place, 
you and the ark of your might. May your priests, Lord God, be clothed with salvation. May your faithful people rejoice in your goodness. Lord God, do not reject your anointed one. Remember the great love promised to David your servant. Then Solomon prayed, O Lord, you have said that you would live in a thick cloud of darkness. Now I have built a glorious temple for you, a place where you can live forever. Then the king turned around to the entire community of Israel standing before him and gave this blessing. Praise the Lord, the God of Israel, who has kept the promise he made to my father David. For he told my father, From the day I brought my people out of the land of Egypt, I have never chosen a city among any of the tribes of Israel as the place where a temple should be built to honor my name, nor have I chosen a king to lead my people Israel. But now I have chosen Jerusalem as the place for my name to be honored, and I have chosen David to be king over my people Israel. Then Solomon said, My father David wanted to build this temple to honor the name of the Lord, the God of Israel. But the Lord told him, You wanted to build the temple to honor my name. Your intention is good, but you are not the one to do it. One of your own sons will build the temple to honor me. And now the Lord has fulfilled the promise he made, for I have become king in my father's place, and now I sit on the throne of Israel, just as the Lord promised. I have built this temple to honor the name of the Lord, the God of Israel. There I have placed the ark which contains the covenant that the Lord made with the people of Israel. Then Solomon stood before the altar of the Lord in front of the entire community of Israel, and he lifted his hands in prayer. Now Solomon had made a bronze platform seven and a half feet long, seven and a half feet wide, and four and a half feet high, and had placed it at the center of the temple's outer courtyard. He stood on the platform, and then he knelt in front of the entire community of Israel, and lifted his hands toward heaven. He prayed, O Lord God of Israel, there is no God like you in all of heaven and earth. You keep your covenant and show unfailing love to all who walk before you in wholehearted devotion. You have kept your promise to your servant David, my father. You made that promise with your own mouth, and with your own hands you have fulfilled it today. And now, O Lord God of Israel, carry out the additional promise you made to your servant David, my father. For you said to him, if your descendants guide their behavior and faithfully follow my law as you have done, one of them will always sit on the throne of Israel. Now, O Lord, God of Israel, fulfill this promise to your servant David. But will God really live on earth among people? Why, even the highest heavens cannot contain you. How much less this temple I have built! Nevertheless, listen to my prayer and my plea, O Lord my God. Hear the cry and the prayer that your servant is making to you. May you watch over this temple day and night, this place where you have said you would put your name. May you always hear the prayers I make toward this place. May you hear the humble and earnest requests from me and your people Israel when we pray toward this place. Yes, hear us from heaven where you live, and when you hear, forgive. If someone wrongs another person and is required to take an oath of innocence in front of your altar at this temple, then hear from heaven and judge between your servants, the accuser and the accused. Pay back the guilty as they deserve. Acquit the innocent because of their innocence. If your people Israel are defeated by their enemies because they have sinned against you, and if they turn back and acknowledge your name and pray to you here in this temple, then hear from heaven and forgive the sin of your people Israel, and return them to this land you gave to them and to their ancestors. If the skies are shut up and there is no rain because your people have sinned against you, and if they pray toward this temple and acknowledge your name, and turn from their sins because you have punished them, then hear from heaven and forgive the sins of your servants, your people Israel. Teach them to follow the right path, and send rain on your land that you have given to your people as their special possession. If there is a famine in the land, or a plague, or crop disease, or attacks of locusts, or caterpillars, or if your people's enemies are in the land besieging their towns, whatever disaster or disease there is, and if your people Israel pray about their troubles or sorrow, raising their hands toward this temple, then hear from heaven where you live, and forgive. Give your people what their actions deserve, for you alone know each human heart. Then they will fear you and walk in your ways as long as they live in the land you gave to our ancestors. In the future, foreigners who do not belong to your people Israel will hear of you, 
They will come from distant lands when they hear of your great name and your strong hand and your powerful arm. And when they pray toward this temple, then hear from heaven where you live, and grant what they ask of you. In this way, all the people of the earth will come to know and fear you, just as your own people Israel do. They, too, will know that this temple I have built honors your name. If your people go out where you send them to fight their enemies, and if they pray to you by turning toward this city you have chosen, and toward this temple I have built to honor your name, then hear their prayers from heaven and uphold their cause. If they sin against you, and who has never sinned, you might become angry with them and let their enemies conquer them, and take them captive to a foreign land far away or near. But in that land of exile they might turn to you in repentance and pray, we have sinned, done evil, and acted wickedly. If they turn to you with their whole heart and soul in the land of their captivity, and pray toward the land you gave to their ancestors, toward this city you have chosen, and toward this temple I have built to honor your name, then hear their prayers and their petitions from heaven where you live, and uphold their cause. Forgive your people who have sinned against you. O oh my God, may your eyes be open and your ears attentive to all the prayers made to you in this place. And now arise, O Lord God, and enter your resting place, along with the ark, the symbol of your power. May your priests, O Lord God, be clothed with salvation. May your loyal servants rejoice in your goodness. O Lord God, do not reject the king you have anointed. Remember your unfailing love for your servant David. Then Solomon said, God said he would dwell in a cloud. But I've built a temple most splendid, a place for you to live in forever. The king then turned to face the congregation that had come together, and blessed them. Blessed be God, the God of Israel, who spoke personally to my father David. Now he has done what he promised when he said, From the day I brought my people Israel up from Egypt, I haven't set apart one city among the tribes of Israel in which to build a temple to honor my name, or chosen one person to be the leader. But now I have chosen both a city and a person, Jerusalem for honoring my name, and David to lead my people Israel. My father David very much wanted to build a temple honoring the name of God, the God of Israel, but God told him, It was good that you wanted to build a temple in my honor, most commendable, but you are not the one to do it. Your son, who will carry on your dynasty, will build it for my name. And now you see the promise completed. God has done what he said he would do. I have succeeded David my father, and now rule Israel, and I have built a temple to honor God, the God of Israel, and have secured a place for the chest that holds the covenant of God, the covenant he made with the people of Israel. Before the entire congregation of Israel, Solomon took his position at the altar of God and stretched out his hands. Solomon had made a bronze dais seven and a half feet square, and four and a half feet high, and placed it inside the court. That's where he now stood. Then he knelt in full view of the whole congregation, stretched his hands to heaven, and prayed, God, O God of Israel, there is no God like you in the skies above or on the earth below, who unswervingly keeps covenant with his servants, and unfailingly loves them while they sincerely live in obedience to your way. You kept your word to David my father, your promise." You did exactly what you promised, every detail. The proof is before us today. Keep it up, God, O God of Israel. Continue to keep the promises you made to David my father when you said, You'll always have a descendant to represent my rule on Israel's throne, on the one condition that your sons are as careful to live obediently in my presence as you have. O God, God of Israel, let this all happen. Confirm and establish it. Can it be that God will actually move into our neighborhood? Why, the cosmos itself isn't large enough to give you breathing room, let alone this temple I've built. Even so, I'm bold to ask, pay attention to these my prayers, both intercessory and personal, O God, my God. Listen to my prayers, energetic and devout, that I'm setting before you right now. Keep your eyes open to this temple day and night, this place you promised to dignify with your name. And listen to the prayers that I pray in this place, and listen to your people Israel when they pray at this place. Listen from your home in heaven, and when you hear, forgive. When someone hurts a neighbor and promises to make things right, and then comes and repeats the promise before your altar in this temple, listen from heaven and act. 
judge your servants, making the offender pay for the offense, and set the offended free, dismissing all charges. When your people Israel are beaten by an enemy because they've sinned against you, but then turn to you and acknowledge your rule in prayers desperate and devout in this temple, listen from your home in heaven, forgive the sin of your people Israel, return them to the land you gave to them and their ancestors. When the skies shrivel up and there is no rain because your people have sinned against you, but then they pray at this place, acknowledging your rule, and quit their sins because you have scourged them, listen from your home in heaven, forgive the sins of your servants, your people Israel, then start over with them, train them to live right and well, send rain on the land you gave as inheritance to your people. When disasters strike, famine or catastrophe, crop failure or disease, locust or beetle, or when an enemy attacks their defences, calamity of any sort, any prayer that's prayed from any one at all among your people Israel, their hearts penetrated by disaster, hands and arms thrown out for help to this temple, listen from your home in heaven, forgive and reward us, reward each life and circumstance, for you know each life from the inside. You're the only one with such inside knowledge." so they'll live before you in lifelong reverence and believing obedience on this land you gave our ancestors. And don't forget the foreigner who is not a member of your people Israel, but has come from a far country because of your reputation. People are going to be attracted here by your great reputation, your wonder-working power, and who come to pray to this temple. Listen from your home in heaven and honor the prayers of the foreigner, so that people all over the world will know who you are and what you're like, and live in reverent obedience before you, just as your own people Israel do, so they'll know that you personally make this temple that I've built what it is. When your people go to war against their enemies at the time and place you send them, and they pray to God toward the city you chose and the temple I've built to honor your name, listen from heaven to what they pray and ask for, and do what is right for them. When they sin against you, and they certainly will, there's no one without sin, and in anger you turn them over to the enemy, and they are taken captive to the enemy's land, whether far or near, but repent in the country of their captivity and pray with changed hearts in their, ex their exile, we've sinned, we've done wrong, we've been most wicked, and turn back to you heart and soul in the land of the enemy who conquered them, and pray to you toward their homeland, the land you gave their ancestors, toward the city you chose, and this temple I have built to the honor of your name, Listen from your home in heaven to their prayers, desperate and devout. Do what is best for them. Forgive your people who have sinned against you. And now, dear God, be alert and attentive to prayer, all prayer offered in this place. Up, God, enjoy your new place of quiet repose, you and your mighty covenant chest. Dress your priests up in salvation clothes. Let your holy people celebrate goodness. And don't, God, back out on your anointed ones, Keep in mind the love promised to David, your servant.